Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Into the Pit. I have here Mr. Casey Shanice, and we're going to get to know him. We're going to get to know about what he does as a paranormal investigator. So, Casey, if you would start off, let's just talk about you, like where you're born and raised and all those good things. Well, I was born and raised in Appleton, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Um, I must just say there, but yes, Wisconsin. Uh, you a cheesehead? I am actually. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm a bad. I'm a Wisconsin fan, so Badgers, Brewers, Green Bay. So I got you. I won't hold that yeah. against you. I mean, I respect all teams. I mean, they all have talents, but I'm a cheesehead, so. Got you. So but, tell me yeah. a little, little bit about, uh, you know, how you got into being a paranormal investigator. Well, ironically, I was watch, I watch TV a lot. So I watched all the ghost shows and stuff like that. That's how I got interested in it. Mm -hmm. But in the last, well, since the last 10 years, since I was watching tabs, I actually never thought I'd be investigating, actually until this past november oh okay just gonna ask you did, if you had started your own or you joined a team i started my own team actually mm -hmm. um but i was uh, back in november a friend of mine's like well why don't you come to my event to one of my events and you'll see what it's like and i did and now i'm at my own team so she's actually the one that got me into actual investigating Okay. So, all right. How many people do you have on your team? Roughly 13 members on my team now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've, I've jumped up to me and her up to 13. When you do your investigations, the, how do you usually go about doing them? Um, we talk to our clients, we interview them. We also do our tours with them. Um, I guess they give us the information we need and then we do investigations and like everybody else does. Um, we go in as skeptics. Uh, we did, we did try to debunk and obviously if it doesn't, can't, then well, it's paranormal. So that's just the way I am. So, yeah, yeah that's the way to, to do it. Go in there and try to debunk everything instead of starting out, you know, Oh yeah, this place is haunted because a lot of times you can find reasons but why we things also happen. go in open-minded too yeah yeah we go in open-minded but yeah we're all we go in a like skeptical mindset too so what kind of equipment do you have uh we actually have very little because we just started in february so i know my teammate she's got a whole bunch of equipment like rem pods rel meters k2 meters um couple of cameras recorders she's even got um the ghost box she's got the bear trigger optic type thing so oh, okay. she's got she got all kinds of stuff but she's not always with us so we don't always have the equipment but and where can I get my own? So yeah, she she bought me a, a few things to start out with. Yeah so uh, do y'all use anything like uh, dowsing rods? Uh, we do not because we don't have the knowledge of those, much less, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any. So, like I said, I don't, we don't have anybody that's knowledgeable f for that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I don't want to mess with something that I don't have knowledge with. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I don't blame you. Well, you know, using just a, a, a digital recorder and, and uh, you know, your instincts, maybe a video camera with night vision, that's that's the best equipment to go with. Um, I'm working on getting cameras pretty soon, like DVR system of cameras, anything that can help us give evidence when we're not there. Uh, so, yeah, it should be a fun ride. Well, to say the least, I'll tell you, go to Walmart and get uh, a home security 
camera system that that okay. works perfect and you don't have to spend a whole lot of money i was actually looking on amazon and um, walmart and i was seeing pretty decent ones yeah, i'm just not one to find out which one's good and which one's not for the most part so it's all new to me i guess i started my team in february we've been to two locations here in wisconsin so far so far yeah and i got like eight nine lined up next yeah our second location actually um we're going to be establishing our team there so i mean for that to happen is pretty cool oh yeah so have you been able to capture any evidence yet um on video no we've had audio um i mean we've seen shadows and all that kind of stuff but nothing too major i've been touched this saturday we were in investigation i was touched twice um seen shadows voices to footsteps and so on so that was pretty cool oh yeah those personal experiences man those are the best yeah they are um yeah you know i never like i said i never really thought i'd be an investigator much less get this much attention so quickly you know it's just been a blessing i've have uh, a sister of mine well she's not a sister but I claim she is because I've known her for almost 20 years now. So she's with me on it. Her husband's with, and there's a few others that are with us. So oh, nice. And my oldest nephew is now starting to wanting to be with me on that. So <laughs> and he's just turning 18. So he's a young pup. So hey, start him out young, man. Yep. <laughs> but it's kind of amazing. Sometimes you'll yep. get in a setting That's and people will. Really people will ask you, you know, Hey, what do you do? And you tell them, Oh yeah, I'm a paranormal investigator. And it's almost like you become a rock star. Right. Yeah. Well, and the funny thing is from November, well, starting actually February, my, my social media on Facebook went from 300 friends to over 2000 friends. So it's like, as a big jump in 90% of them are all paranormal investigators all across the country even even some in the uk even it's like wow that's just getting that and then i got taps i've got friends from there from that the newest team like daryl and them guys i know them so that's that was interesting meeting them on facebook so it was kind of cool yeah daryl and and mustafa brian rochelle Brandon, they're all wonderful people, and uh, they they don't act yeah, like they're, they're celebrities. People. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know the original Taps members. They're they don't act like celebrities either, that I've noticed. So especially Jason, he's mellow. He really doesn't care if he's popular or not. He just does his job. <laughs> from exactly. what I've from what I'm seeing, you know. I tell you, um, I. I, I got to meet Dave and and uh, Dustin and Steven and uh, and Samantha and th they were all just they were wonderful they 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 don't act like they're any kind of celebrity right. and and you know even though they're kind of like the I guess you say the Godfathers of of the paranormal for us yeah. they they yeah. don't they don't have that uh, that big head about it right. Yeah, I actually will be meeting Jason, Steve, Tango, Dustin, um, a lot of those guys at uh, the end of the month. Cool. And where's that going to be? Because so, I'll be going to the Michigan Paranormal Convention. So I'll be meeting a lot of the top investigators. So my mom's taking along with that one. So she's into that kind of stuff. So she'll be joining me in a lot of investigations too. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, what's the name of your team? Eastern Wisconsin Paranormal. Eastern Wisconsin Paranormal. All right. So, have y'all started a, uh, a Facebook page for the group or Instagram, any other kind of social media? Um, not. We have our own Facebook page, but we don't have any Instagram or anything like that yet. Now, is that just the the 
Eastern Wisconsin Paranormal. Is that the name of the page? Yep. Okay. I, I can send you that link too. Yeah, if you would, I will post that up in the description of the video so people can follow you. And um, if you ever get the Instagram or anything yep. else, send I it to me. Get a, um, yeah, I'm, uh, we're going to actually be taping our uh, investigations too soon. Oh, cool. For YouTube, for YouTube channels and stuff. So we've got a guy that's doing that for us. Okay. So you yeah. got your cameraman. Well, yeah, I pretty much will. Um, my nephew is going to be my tech manager, so that's going to be new for him. But he's pretty good with electronics, so I'm not going to, you know, basically I'm not going to have him like, oh, my God, what is this? Or, you know, because he's hooked up his systems and stuff before. So it'd be nothing new to him. I know whenever people are first getting into the paranormal, um, I always like to know, I mean, what was that, that, I guess, aha moment for you where you said, okay, I'm definitely going to do this? That was actually, I was at uh, Karsten Inn here in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and I actually had my hand held, and that, there was like, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing for my passion and my work, basically. My brother says I have more guts than he does. You got family and friends that say you're crazy? Not really crazy, but more or less more gutsy, because my brother doesn't like being in the dark even in his own backyard he doesn't really stay out there very long unless it's by the fire but yeah i have some some family that like yeah you're a nut i'm like well you knew that all my yeah. life so <laughs> yeah i've always been knowing that too um i mean my family adores me so they they support whatever i do he doesn't want to do any of the traveling ghost hunting stuff but he supports so I mean, his work, his business is going to be our sponsor, so that's kind of cool. Oh, that's so, really nice. Yeah, I'll be working for him here and there when I can and stuff like that. I guess it'll be a fun ride. Yeah, my friend Sarah, she, she's the one that was one that um, invited me to her team's in paranormal investigation. Because it was an open public type of investigation, so she's like, a lot of people are going to be there, but she wanted me to try it out. She basically never left my side, pretty much. She just, like, wanted to be next to me investigating and never left. A lot of people, like, wanted to join, never left. So, I don't know. I must be that person that pulls you in and never leave. So. <laughs> there you go. Well, you must have that personality. I do. A lot of people seem to like me. I mean, her friend also was that kind of same way. Like, she enjoyed being around me, too. But work-wise, I don't know what it is that I do because I'm just myself. I don't really do anything special. But do you get a lot of advice? Um, Actually, I do get quite a lot of advice. Actually, Daryl's been giving me hints here and there advice-wise. So it's been pretty cool talking with him. I guess you could say he's kind of like a mentor. If I have questions, he'll answer type thing. So oh, he's good. the main one. He's the main one I really talk to mainly than the other ones. Oh, yeah. Daryl's good people. Yeah. And we learn from each yeah. other, too, because you're never going to be an expert. Right. People right. that say I, that are fooling themselves. Yeah, I, I actually, um, a lot of my knowledge actually came from Jason Hawes and his team. So. I learn from them every day, new things every every time I see them on TV. I kind of present my way with them, and then it just goes from there. Whatever new I have, I share. Whatever everybody else has, they share. So it's just big paranormal family that help each other out. So Yeah, you have some good people in the paranormal field, and then you have some that like to cause drama, and I, I don't understand why, because we're all supposed to be a community and, uh, yeah. you know, almost family in a way, so we should be yeah. helping each other instead of, you know, trying to, to hurt one another. Right. Actually, I've got another um, local team that I'm working with now, too, on the side. Like they'll be helping us out. We'll be helping them out type thing. So like if they have an investigation, they're the one members, they'll call us to ask us to help out, vice versa. So 
That's cool. We do the same thing. Uh, we try to help each other. You know, sometimes they're short on people and sometimes we're short on people. Yeah. It's good when somebody can kind of step in and say, Hey, I'll, I'm glad to help. That's the way, that's the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be a family. Yeah. And that's what I'm all about is to help people. Yeah. That's the way I'm, I'm just more one to help. But they don't need no money for it. Well, exactly. You know, and you have to be kind of leery when you got people that are trying to charge to do these kind of things. This is right. You know, more for, you know, I mean, it's fun, but you're trying to right. help people. So I don't, I don't believe in charging people. Now, yeah. If you want to donate, that's fine, but I don't ever ask anybody. Right. And that's the way I, I mean, all, a friend of mine, she's like, well, do you charge people to, for your services? I know it's free. I mean, we're here to help people that need help. My opinion is to help business owners keep their business running because of it. You know, that's what I'm kind of leaning towards right now. And then leaning towards home investigations. But right now, it's more business right now just to get my feet on the, in more. When you have the business background, they say, yeah, well, he's they're good. They're good. Then they're going to want, you know what I mean, type of thing. So... That's what we're leaning towards more. Yeah, I, I think that's part of people's reluctance to to call on groups like us because they think, yo, know, I ain't got money to pay for that. And a good team is really not going to charge you, right? And I just got a guy that um, the the um, place that I mentioned that's going to be you know, letting us establish there. I've got a new investigator that just joined. He's been investigator for several years now and he does a lot of hosting stuff so he'll be helping me with that partnering up with me for that and all that kind of stuff so it'll be fun yeah and when you when you're running a group and some people will probably disagree with me but i i don't like to say that you know oh i'm i'm the the boss or whatever the, of the team, we all put in equal input. Now, when it comes to making right. real decisions, that's, that's I, I have to, I, I have to make those decisions, but right. I, I also talk it over with the group before we, you know, make anything final. Right. And that, and that's what we do. I mean, I've seen teams that one person's like, Oh, you gotta do this in this department. You gotta do that in that department. And, you know what I mean? You gotta do this, do that, do this, do that, and basically be a boss type. And I'm like, that's not me. Yeah, I'm just like, obey the client's rules, have fun, you know, choose which one they want to work with, switch off, and just have fun. That's been our thing since we started. Yeah, you have to be respectful not only to the clients, but also to whatever you may be, you know, investigating. Yeah. You don't know you know, what kind of trauma the spirit's been through. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you, you want to be as respectful as you can. And yeah. I, I don't tell provoke. All my, all my team. Yeah. I tell my team that all the time. Do not provoke because you don't know what you're going up against. Well, and it's disrespectful. One, yeah. The good ones can turn bad on you if you're disrespectful to them. Not like they're always good. You know what I mean? They're like people, you know? Oh yeah. Well, yeah, they, they are. Um, and some of them are stuck. And I know yeah. some people that want to keep them around, I guess, as almost like a, a gimmick or, you know, a, a, a party trick or something. But right. If you can help them to cross over, then you do everything in your power to do that. And it's why I always recommend that the that any team that goes out find you a reputable psychic medium that can come in and, and can communicate with them and also give you the right advice on how to help this entity pass over. And if it's something that you can't handle and something that the, the client's not going to be able to handle, that's when you bring no. in somebody who can. Right. I actually know a couple of psychics that are willing to help me if I need to. That's good. Uh, um, I'm actually a sensitive, so I kind of can tell if they want it, help or not. So, Good. I mean. Well, I guess I should ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I've, I've had abilities. I, actually, I don't even, didn't even know I had abilities until recently until I was told. 
I, I'm an empath. Um, okay, that's that's a good. It's a learning thing. Yeah, it is. It is, especially if you've had those abilities all your life and you never really tried to to use them, and you're just now finding out. You know, anybody that can help you with that. If you got psychic medium friends, you take all the advice you can. Learn yeah. to meditate. Learn to listen. I've, I've been I've been meditating for the last two months, and if I don't meditate, I can't sleep. Does anything ever bother you when you're trying to sleep? No, nothing really bothers me. It's just if I don't meditate, my mind just races and races. And, but once I turn the meditation, I'm out like instant. Sometimes I'll wake up with my head still on my head, just like listening. Yeah, and it's like, okay, <laughs> type thing. So, yeah. So I've been I've been having crystals around too. Um, oh, that's good. Good for protection and for healing and that kind of stuff. And ones that also help with meditation type stuff and that that too. So that's I've been getting a lot of advices from people what crystal can do this, what one can do that with. I, I bring my crystals with me to every investigation I go to. So okay. that seems to help, especially the one that blocks the negative ones away. I bring those crystals with just so that they don't follow me home. Yeah. Do, do y'all sage? Um, I don't, but um, the team team that I've been working with actually the owners both of them are ordained ministers so that's kind of a plus oh good so if we feel attachment they'll be there to help so that's always a plus even if they're not around and we're investigating they'll still help so that's kind of nice to have in the back pocket anytime you can get that outside help man because when I first got into it the team that I first joined they I don't think they really knew what they were doing and I actually brought something home with me and it, it made me physically ill to the point of uh, after three doctors and all the tests that I went through, they never could find out what was wrong. And a, it was actually a, a, a medium that helped me to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, it, it will make you sick, man. Yeah. Yeah. That that's the actual risk we all gotta take when we do this field. But like I said, when you got backgrounds of people that mediums, priests, pastors, if they're all there for you, then you'd be fine. Along with Christ, obviously. Oh yeah. Pray. That's another good thing. Pray. Yeah, there's actually a couple of teams or uh, a specific team that I watched on TV that actually did that before their before their investigations on actual TV. It's like, you don't see a lot of teams on TV doing that. Yeah, I believe Tennessee Wraith Chasers do that before they it, begin yes. an investigation. Yep. I actually get to meet uh, Chris and Mike at the end of the week, end of the month, too, for the convention. So, yeah. Ah. I mean, they get to meet a lot of those guys, so it's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to to actually meet Scott in person. It's just, I've had him on my show before and uh, we're making a trip to Tennessee and I'm like, Hey man, we're going to be right down the road from you. You want to meet up and eat somewhere? And he's like, Hey, let me know when you're in town. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. He's a good old yeah. country boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be a long ride for me. I can tell you that. And I've been married. I was married for 10 years and, like I said, I never thought I'd be investigating, but now I'm not with her anymore, obvious reasons, but I mean, things happen for a reason, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, I, I don't believe in coincidences anymore. Too many things have happened to make me believe that the universe and God has plans for us. You know, I, I, I'd gotten divorced and was on my own for 10 years until I met my wife that I have now and we were, we were going out on our first date after we'd been talking over the phone for I guess a month and uh, the night we were supposed to go on a date she 
called me and she says, Hey, I'm sorry. I have to call the date off. Something important came up and I have to go. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I, I understand. And of course I thought she was blowing me off, but, um, uh, she kept texting me all night and I'm like, well, this is weird. If she went out on another date or she went somewhere else, why is she texting me all night? So I finally built up the nerve to say, Hey, what, why did you have to blow off our date? And about 10 minutes of silence before she finally said, well, I have to, I might as well tell you now, I have to tell you that I'm a paranormal investigator and we had a, a case come up where a, a child was possibly in uh, harm's way. And that's why I, I had to go. And she was afraid that I was going to think she was kooky and not want to go mm-hmm. out with her. And I said, yeah. I said right there on the spot, will you marry me now? <laughs> <laughs> right. And we've been together six years. So something went right. That's good. Yeah. I've got a few. few. Yeah. I got a couple of female friends of mine that like just one recently I've known her for, Oh God, I would say like six years now. I met her with my wife when I, when I was married. We met at our church that we went to. And I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't think she was into this stuff. I'm just one day, you know, I was talking to her like, this is what I do now. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah. And then she's like, well, I watch those shows too. <laughs> okay, then. Well, I guess I don't have to hide that from you then. You know, so it's, <laughs> it's nice to have. It's nice to have, you know, women, you know, interest in, in it, but also support too, you yeah. know, if they don't actually investigate, but ones that can understand, you know. Well, I know for a while I was almost skeptical to tell anyone because I, I didn't want the ridicule. And then I was like, you know what? I like doing this. This is part of my life now. And if people don't like it, then they can just lump it because it's not going to stop me from doing it. So whatever. You know, you either yeah. like me or you don't, and you think I'm a nut, fine. I mean, I am uh, a nut, but that's beside the point. <laughs> are we all, a, you know, I mean, all of us are in some way, shape, or form, but. Hey, true geniuses have a bit of madness to them. Every yep, one of them. Yep. So. And I actually never realized how many females are actually into this field because, like, I'm getting all these female requests friend requests that are in the paranormal I'm like hmm, okay that's interesting you know so i mean it's i mean it's cool i like that because it's not just a guy thing so to speak well and, and that's uh, the way it should be you know right. it, you need you need a, a little bit of that male and that female touch when you're dealing with any kind of spirits entities ghosts what have you so yeah, yeah um I, I i wouldn't be able to do what i do without my wife around yeah, it's just, I have a lot of friends that support it, and actually some like Anna, that she must have contacted you about interviewing with you, because she got jealous. <laughs> She's like, what? You're in an interview with him? Yeah. Damn it, I'm trying to get a, you know, <laughs> type thing. What, what's the name of her group? Uh, Six Sense Paranormal. Okay, I think I, I think I do know who that is. Um, I can't remember her last name. Uh, Gatlin, she did message you, I think, recently. She told me you guys had a meeting set up for an interview. But yeah, at first she was jealous. She was like, I've wanted to get do that for the longest time, and you get to do it before I do. I'm like, well, he came to me first, and it wasn't me going to him. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, I think she had messaged me because I'd put a message out there for anybody that was interested in, in being interviewed to please contact me. And um, I think she had something right. going on in her life that she couldn't do it right away. So if it's the same person I'm thinking of, um, but if you yeah, talk to she, her, tell her to get back in touch with me. Um, yeah, I think she did message you. I don't know. Um... Or at least she told me she was planning on it. Um, well, I get I get so many messages, and I I try to keep up with everybody's names, but um, when you meet <laughs> six seven hundred people, it's hard to remember everybody's name. You know, hell, I'm right. sometimes I have to go through the list of all my kids before I call the right name. Yeah, sometimes out. you can't remember your own name, I mean, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes, yeah, it can get overwhelming. I can tell you, but it's fun ride. I mean, oh, it is. You my, meet so many great people. 
my brother's like, I have never met that many people in my lifetime. What's what you've got? And I'm like, well, I mean, it's paranormal. You can meet a lot of people. So, yeah. Well, I, I, rec- I recommend that you join some of those Facebook pages of the paranormal and, you know, everybody share advice and, you know, <laughs> sometimes people come up with new cool techniques that um they can pass on i don't i don't like to hold all that to myself i'd like to share right right because i mean somebody might be able to tell me something that can help me in the future that i never thought of right and i've actually never really been knowledge of stuff i come up with things too so it's like it's sometimes it's on the fly you know yeah something happens it's like hey let's try this and I may never, somebody out there may have done it before, but I'd never heard of it and I tried it. Right. Um, I mean, we have a, a REM pod and we went to uh, Seguin, Texas. Now, Seguin is known for the Magnolia Hotel, I believe that's the name yep. of it. And I've heard of it. Anyway, the, the client, we went to her house. It's, it was literally down the street from the Magnolia. But uh, anyway, that's another story. But anyway, they, they're remodeling the house, and this house was really old. And I set the REM pod up in this one room, and it was beeping like I had never heard before. And as it was mm. beeping, somebody in the group said, you know, that sounds like Morse code. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. It does sound like Morse code. So I jumped on my phone, and I found an app that you could actually type in a sentence and it would make the beeps just like a Morse code. And no. it seemed like it was talking back and forth. Now, mind you, I, I don't know how to, to decipher Morse code very well. Right, uh, right. So I couldn't keep up with whatever was being said back and forth if there was a conversation. But it's, it seemed like it was because it was answering. Every time I would punch in a question, it would right. do the beeps. And it was it was incredible. So I'm... Hey, if you come across something like that, try it. I mean, it's a free right. app. So. And that that reminds me, I was in a, my very first investigation with my team. We were at a theater, which is in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And Oshkosh is a base known for the Civil War mm-hmm. era. And we were in the theater area. Yeah, our recorders, actually, I've thought of hit the Morse codes, like do 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 type thing. Mm-hmm. We did not hear this with our ears. So I'm like, where did that come from? I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. And here I'm trying to debunk it, trying to figure out if it was one of their equipment going off, like mm-hmm. camera ticking, stuff like that. A buddy of mine like, well maybe it could be the camera malfunction. I'm like, no, that's not it. It can't be. You would hear it. And like, yeah, that's true. I'm like and then you would think if you you're in a theater in that huge room, you would hear the echo of something happening from different equipment they've got. We didn't hear anything. Of course, recorders can pick up more than what we can, but sure. I mean, not not like that. And then, um, of course, I have I have a lot of people in the military, so I'm like asking them this, asking them that, and that with that. And they're like, well, it seems like a Morse code to me. And then I got thinking about the Civil War, so I'm looking it up, and yeah, sure enough, that was a big area for the Civil War hospital stuff. So it was like kind of cool to get some that air typing like that, or yeah, we didn't hear that with our own ears. That's the best evidence to get when you don't hear it and the recorder hears it. Oh yeah, yeah, I picked up some pretty great stuff. The, one of the weirdest things that happened to us, and I wish somebody could explain to me how the heck this happened. The house that was getting remodeled, my buddy had brought one of his digital recorders and, you know, he left it going and at the end of the investigation. We we're packing everything up. He couldn't find his recorder. And we looked and I'm like, well, maybe it'll come up. I'll, I'll ask the lady that owns the place if she runs across the recorder to please give it back to us right. anyways quite a bit of time went by and then i got a message from her says hey i found your recorder 
or should I say my workers found your recorder? And I'm like, okay. She said it was inside one of the walls that they were tearing out. I'm like, what? Uh -uh. She goes, yes, it's inside. It was inside the wall. When they busted the wall open, there it was. I'm like, you're uh -uh. kidding me. So that's weird. <laughs> hey, if somebody can explain it to me, please do. I've I've heard spirits taking things and hiding them in odd spots. You know, I've heard a lot of stories like that, but I mean, sometimes you really can't explain that either. Like my sister, her house is haunted too, and she's had stuff moved from one spot into the middle of the floor without no one touching it. And where it was sitting at, if someone did, there'd be a lot more on the floor than just one thing. And it's just, and she knows who the spirit is. It's her father that haunts the place. He's a friendly one, but yeah, they know it's him because it was his stuff. So every time I go in that house, I get the hairs on my hands standing up and I'm look. It's like one certain spot I stare at and it's like, is that my intuition kicking in or is he trying to tell me something, you know? And it's like, like every time I walk into that house, same thing over and over and over again. Yeah, you just go with your intuitions, man. You got to learn to trust your abilities. That That's how you develop them. You trust in them. Yeah, and it was funny. Our first the um, theater investigation, I didn't even know. I had a dream about it once, and then two weeks later, I'm starting to investigate it, and I'm like, holy crap, what? It was actually the bit. It was actually the building next door that I was dreaming about, not that bit of building. So that was kind of weird, because both buildings are across the street from each other. So I'm like, okay, that's a little weird. And then this last, this the last place, the same thing. I dreamt something in that area, and then we're investigating that place. So the trend of dreams that I have places, and then where I end up going there, and it's weird. I don't know what it is. Like they're calling me there or something. I don't know. It's a possibility. Definitely hone in on those abilities, man, because they they will help you in your investigations. Now my team's like, did you dream of any place yet? Is there any place you jumped yet? No. I guess we're not investigating anytime soon yet until you do. <laughs> so it's like, well, I mean, so. Now we have, I have a, quite a few lined up already, so across the state. Um, Sarah, my investigator, she's trying to get me into the state asylum here in the state. Hmm. So, or at least one of them. I'm like, hmm, that'd feel like home for me. <laughs> That's the way my mind is sometimes, but <laughs> he laughs and like, yeah. Like, so oh. I, I've never been to an asylum before to investigate, so it'd be cool to it can get crazy. I've been mm. to a few. It's it's uh, it's an experience. I'll just say that. Yeah, she's is pretty active. She's like they're not aggressive. She says they're more. They can get agitated more or less than more like angry type feel. She's like they're just normal people. If they get agitated, they'll let you know. Yeah, so, they will. They will definitely let you know that. Yeah, she's just like, just let it go with the flow. I mean, sure. they want to be known, they'll let you know that they'll be known. You know, they like, can't let it go on, like, force them to do anything. So they want to be seen, they'll be seen, let you know they want to be seen. So, yeah, they will. Uh, yeah, so I'm learning a lot from her and others too. And, what favorite equipment people like and what they don't like and reasons of it. And so it's just good advice to know from other people. So, yep. Yeah. Any kind of advice you could get, share whatever knowledge that you have. Um, let's just keep this thing going and help each other out. You know, yeah. it's, it's it shouldn't be an ego thing. It should just be, we're trying to help people kind of thing. Yeah, and actually, my uh, sister she had bought some cat toys, a little button that turned on the light, and you set on the floor and it lights up. It's like let's try that and see how that goes. It actually works. I'll set it down and I'll actually touch it and it'll light up or roll. We had it roll last week. 
Oh my gosh. This past Saturday, so we're like, okay, this works. <laughs> I mean, if they're playful, they'll play around with it. Don't bother us. So I'll, I'll tell you something else. You know, you see those, uh, those grid lights mm. that puts little dots on the wall and you see if something passes through it. You, know, you go online and try to buy that. It's like a hundred and something dollars, I think. I actually, I actually have one. I have a laser. Do you? You know what we did? The grid. You know, whenever yep Christmas yeah. season comes around and they have those ones that they shine on the your your house, it looks yep. like you have decorations all over. We yep. we just got one of those. It was like twenty bucks. Oh, nice. Yeah, we have. Uh... A couple of millimeters with our my sister and I. We, she bought me one for just whatever for helping her out, and we use it. That's how I seen my shadow that I seen this past week. And that was just the same time as um, the owner got touched. Not long after her husband got touched on command, nonetheless, um, or I should say request, not command. Um, I got touched twice on request so that was kind of cool all around the same time the shadow went through a couple of shadows went through the laser grid so it was kind of cool i hope you don't have one of those evenings like i had something you know I, I i have abilities or at least i've been told to have abilities and i haven't really pursued them um i just don't have that kind of confidence i guess but my ear will pop like you know when you're on an airplane but it's always yep. my left ear when there's a spirit around and it happened to me one night and i'm laying in the bed and i actually felt something touch my shoulder and pull the covers off of me and it made my heart sink because <laughs> it scared the snot out of me wasn't expecting yeah. it you know sometimes right. things like that happen no yep. yeah i mean I've never had that happen to me before, but I mean, the only thing that's been happening with me is dreams of places. And it's like, and then the next thing you know, I'm messaging the owners, like, hey, can you all of boom, they're like, yes, come in. It's like, usually it takes a lot more than just that. Uh, and the owners say, yeah, come in, you know, type of thing. Well, what you should do is if you can get some good evidence, um, you know, build up a little bit and message me again, and we could have a uh, evidence reveal on one of the shows if you'd be willing to do that. Oh, sure, no problem. That would be fun. I think so. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody that joins us. Appreciate it. Until the yep. next one. Peace. Peace out. Bye bye.